Welcome, Magnus here. In today's video, we're going to talk about Nikon purchasing RED and what that might mean for the future of raw video recording when it comes to compressed raw because RED own the patent for that type of compression. If you're new to my channel, definitely consider subscribing. Now, before I start this video, I do want to say thank you and welcome. I don't know, but like in the past couple of days, I've almost doubled my YouTube subscribers and my previous video that I did a week ago has done pretty well. Now, I don't normally get a few thousand views per video, but in last week's video, I got over 12,000 views and then my subscriptions nearly doubled. So thank you. And I look forward to producing content that the new subscribers as well as the old subscribers will enjoy. I've been doing this since 2016, about summer 2016, when the 5D Mark IV came out. And here we are, eight years later. And it's taken me eight years to get a little over 3,000 subscribers. And overnight, it doubled. And to be honest, I'm so grateful for everyone new. I can think of so many YouTubers that have been in the game as long as I have and have hundreds of thousands, even millions of subscribers when they started off at the same time as me. Now, that did not deter me from fighting and wanting to, of course, give you guys what you want. And to have that appreciation shown, especially recently, that the algorithm actually worked to my advantage and doubled my subscribers, I am eternally grateful. And 6,000 people, that's a lot of people paying attention, so I want to do my part. But without further delay, let's get right into my thoughts on how this will affect raw video going forward. Now, if you don't know, Nikon has been making cameras for many years, but Nikon in itself has particularly been focused and doing a good job on its photography standpoint when it comes to its cameras. But the video side of these mirrorless cameras have not really been the front line when it comes to video production. A lot of video focused content creators, as well as those in the field, have depended on the likes of Canon, have depended on the likes of Sony, or dependent on the likes of Lumix, Panasonic, with its videos, because they have actually given you an option of either taking great photos or giving you next level video features that pushes you forward into the next level, and you can count on what it can do and make it easy for you. There have also been new entries that has specifically focused on video, such as Blackmagic. Blackmagic has been around for years, but their mirrorless cameras, especially with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera Series and the new Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K have really kind of shot next level. And when video production, especially for Instagram, especially for TikTok and these YouTube shorts, video has come centerfold when it comes to what people want. And camera manufacturers recognize this. So does Nikon. But Nikon no longer wants to sit in the back, so they decided to purchase Red after a recent lawsuit where Red actually sued Nikon due to Nikon's compressed raw video. Now, what's raw video and why is this so important? Now, what does that mean? What does raw mean? What is a raw photo? What's raw video? Well, when you're taking a photo, when you're taking a picture or video, the sensor on the camera will, of course, pick up the image. Now, the sensor will then translate that image into a video file. And then it's what you see. The data that's captured from the sensor is interpreted. The, the camera will do its best to make it look good before it sends it to you. However, with raw video, the sensor captures the data and then that data is saved. That way there's no basically making it look nice. And that job is left up to the editor. What that allows is a lot of the settings that we do in the camera before we start recording, you could actually do in post so that let's say you set the colors a little bit off and a little bit incorrectly, you have the ability to adjust that in post. Now the con to that is that the files are usually pretty big when it comes to video. Even photo files for when it comes to raw photos are big, but video files are huge. Pretend you're taking 30 pictures, 60 pictures, or even 24 pictures a second. Those large files are then saved and then you have to not only interpret them and apply color and apply all the settings, but then of course edit it. And that's why raw video is interesting. It takes a little bit of work and it's not for the faint of heart when you just want to send your work out there. But raw video in itself is very helpful. 
That is something that Nikon has been doing and compressing their raw video in their cameras. And that's why Red sued them. You see, Red taking that idea of like, these files are so large, Red decided to say, hey, you know what? We're going to take that logic and compress those raw files before you work with them. And those are called like red files. And those still allow you to change the settings, but in a much smaller format. And they play smoothly on your computer. Different manufacturers loved that idea and wanted to take that idea and run with it. However, Red filed a patent when they did that. And anyone who would try to do compress raw, they would sue. Now, Blackmagic decided to say, hey, you know what? We want to do compress raw, but we don't want to get in trouble. So what they did to kind of work around the patent is that they designed their own raw but it's not really raw. It's not the pure data. What they do is they apply some settings by default to make it easy to play on your computer. And they do some softening, some easier process internally within the camera. And then some settings you can still adjust in post. So it makes you feel like it's a raw video, but it's really not raw video, but it's good enough for a lot of content producers. Now that is how they worked around that patent. And Canon does their own raw video. Now the Canon R5 allows you to record internal 8K raw. And they have basically a large format of raw that allows you to get raw video, but it's almost like it's uncompressed because the files are huge. Now it does its own slight compression with this raw as well but it's still very large files and it requires you to pretty much get a CF Express type B card in order to record that. Now these cards are super fast, but it allows you to get that type of raw video and then edit in post, which is great, but Red still own that pen. Now after those lawsuits, Nikon decided, hey, you know what? We're going to purchase Red for maybe two reasons. Now this is just me speculating, but one of the reasons has to be the fact that now they can own the patent for compressed raw and do whatever they want with it. And the second reason has to be, you know what? Nikon wants to elevate its video to next level and they're not really in the professional video space until now. And Red delivers amazing quality when it comes to video production. So now the race is on. What does this mean for the future of raw video? For Canon? For Sony? For Blackmagic and even potentially for Atomos because the Atomos Ninja V Plus and the V records ProRes RAW externally. Let's talk about my thoughts and theories. This is kind of a rant here. Now, first things first, my hope is really that Nikon opens up this hold that Red had for so long because they're a much larger company over the compressed RAW and allows to license that technology or that patent to the other manufacturers so that we can get a compressed raw in all different manufacturers. You can have Sony doing it, which Sony doesn't really do compressed raw in their series of mirrorless cameras that are not geared towards video specifically. And that's kind of sad. But if Nikon opens it up to other manufacturers, that increases competition. Now, when Nikon's trying to profit and make money off of video, do they want to open that up? Potentially. Because if you can make everyone else use a form of compressed RAW that is owned by Nikon, you can have an ability for Nikon to actually gain revenue based off of licensing rights over the compressed RAW. That's one option. But then you also have the option to push the industry forward and not lock it down like Red did when it comes to compressed RAW. Because compressed RAW in itself has been held back for the, by the fact that only one company really owned the patent rights because it was so broad that no one really wanted to use that compressed raw. And now that you have Nikon owning it, they will not hold back when it comes to compressed raw. If they license it out, then you could have other manufacturers do compressed raw. But in the case where Nikon decides we're not going to license it out, what's to stop Sony or Canon kind of pushing the extreme to say, hey, you know, fine, you're not going to license it out. But is Nikon so quick to sue like Red was when it came to compressed raw? And that is yet to be seen. So my prediction for raw video is that this was a good thing because you removed a factor of a manufacturer that controlled that. And now you can potentially open and expand the idea 
of raw video. And I would like to see raw video not only in mirrorless and DSLR cameras. I know we're in a mirrorless game going forward. But not only in that, but also raw video on cell phones that's small enough to practically record on a person's cell phone and then make those tweaks and post to get you what raw video really truly does. And then when you have manufacturers such as Samsung, such as Apple, using raw video in their smaller cameras, then those creators can really take advantage of next level features that only larger cameras have been able to do. But we don't know what's really going to happen. However, I'm excited that Nikon has gone that level. And if you don't know what raw video is, you might find out in the short term. And if you record video on your cell phone, allowing the ability to record video and then tweak settings in post will be a game changer for video. And I think it's going to take us to the next level. But those are my thoughts. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Here's a question for you. If you have the ability to record raw video instead of log, files are slightly larger. Would you prefer to record raw video and tweak white balance, tweak exposure settings where you wouldn't have been able to do that with log video? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, like, share, and you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. And once again, thank you to the new subscribers. See you guys later.